What do narcissists do when they are left alone on their own? How do they fill their supply tank? We all know they cannot stand their miserable selves. So how do they keep going? What activities do they indulge themselves into? Let's find out in today's episode. I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about five things a narcissist does when he or she is left alone on their own. If that sounds interesting and you are new to this channel, it is my request that you consider subscribing before we begin because your subscription to the channel may help in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. Number one, they will jump into the sea of social media and try to hunt down a lot of supply. The moment they are left alone and the moment they see everybody is gone, they get excited. The excitement is all about the possibilities they are yet to explore. They will slide into DMs with the random people and try to be all flirtatious or try to love on them. Maybe they might try to trade some pictures with them. You know what type of pictures I'm talking about. Or they may leave comments on random people's posts, be it on, on Instagram, on YouTube, wherever possible and whenever possible, they will very gladly do it. If a narcissist is not into looking for that kind of supply, sexual fuel I'm talking about, then they will randomly argue with people for no reason whatsoever because they love the hit they get from it. Sky is the only limit when it comes to a narcissist wandering about in the vast realm of social media. They can hook up with random people, they can call escorts, they can do all sorts of bizarre and unacceptable stuff, stuff they won't do in your presence and they can only do in isolation because they have to save their image. They have to make everybody think, oh, they are really pious, they are loyal, they are an amazing person. But the moment you are gone, you are out of sight, you are out of their mind, They're, that loyalty they fake is washed and flushed down the drain, they become totally immoral and cross every single limit and or boundary they are supposed to adhere by or follow. Number two, the most disgusting behavior. They will start going through your stuff. They will break all the rules and breach your privacy by searching your private journals and they want to know what you're all about. What are you writing about? How are you feeling so that they can use and weaponize that information to further abuse you? If they're stealers, they will take away your money. They will steal jewelry. They will destroy your makeup if you're a woman married or in a relationship with a male narcissist. They might destroy your clothes. That is what has also happened. They will tear them apart. They'll cut them in the middle. And then later when you come back to all of that, that chaos, that mess, they'll gaslight you. They'll say, oh, you're making up things. It was like that. You never had that kind of money. What are you talking about? I never did that. I don't know what, what it is. Going through your stuff is not only related to stealing, it's also about instilling fear, making you feel extremely vulnerable and unsafe in your own space so that you remain in a terrorized state and they, can, they get to abuse you very easily. For example, if they go through your computers, your phones, your diaries, everything, your text messages, of course, you are going to become paranoid. You are going to feel so hurt. And the problem is you cannot express that. Plausible deniability. There is no proof. So for the narcissist, it never happened. And they're really good at lying pathologically. No matter what you say and how much you express the discomfort you are in because of their activities, their stalking activities, they won't accept they will fight you till their last breath. And that is what happened to me when my narcissistic roommate stole my money. The moment I was out of the room, there my money was gone. I had proof of that, evidence for that, but nobody listened. And I was painted and labeled as the crazy one. Number three, they will call your friends and family and talk nonsense about you. They will run massive smear campaigns 
because it is the time for them to gossip about you. And they are really, really big gossipers. They know how to thrive off of it. They know how to feel the hit. It is their duper's delight. The, the sense of deception and they get to it. The fact they can run away with it is their fuel. It's evil, isn't it? Because who does that to their own partner, to their own child? But they will very openly talk crap about you to those who they can target and bring to their side. It's all about gathering massive fuel. It is the recruitment process for minions and enablers. They can literally go from door to door telling lies about you, smearing your name, destroying your reputation. And you might wonder why. Because they are envious of all your achievements, of all your relationships. They're jealous of everything that you have and that they cannot take away from you. So what do they do when they are lonely? They go out and utilize their time in destroying you. It is such a pathetic way of living, but that is what a narcissist's life is all about. They never spend that time into exploring their own self, their own hobbies. Their hobby is all about ruining other people's, people's life since there is no depth, truth or substance to their own. Number four, if they do not find any new source of supply or if it is too tiring to do that, they will seek their old sources of supply, their exes who are still possibly trauma bonded to them and they call them, they ring them up, they message them and cry wolf of oh, this happened and that happened, can you come over? And you know how that ends. If it is a male narcissist, I can guarantee you that he goes to his mother, who is his ultimate enabler, his real wife, should I say. It sounds nauseating, but that is what it is like with a male narcissist. And she adores him. She puts him on a pedestal and babies him, you know, comforts him, nurtures him as if he is this two-year-old spoiled rotten kid infant stuck in an adult's body. They stoop extremely low to gather supply. They can go out with a random stranger they do not know and have zero interest in knowing, but they might go out with them on a dinner if that means they will get a lot of supply, a lot of attention, and they will get to tell all the stories about their greatness or their victimhood if it is a covert vulnerable Narcissist. It is pathetic. It's so rotten, so shallow, so fake the way they live. Because think about this. You can't stand your own self for even an hour. You cannot be on your own. You have to seek somebody and that somebody can be anybody. Come on. If that is not your karma, if that is not your curse, then I don't know what it is. Number five and the most obvious one. They get drunk, use substances, use drugs, and visit adult websites. They feed their fantasies. That's why they cannot be intimate with you because their fantasies of how physical intimacy should be like are out of this world or based off a pure imagination and nothing else. So the, they feed their narcissistic false self and it stimulates them mentally in a way that reality cannot because they are disconnected from it. When they are present in reality with you, when they are in the act, they run away from everything since they don't want to feel vulnerable. Looking at a screen and looking at random people does not require them to be vulnerable. So that's exciting for them. They get heavily drunk and or high and call you and tell you all uh, the bizarre things. Either it can be love bombing, unexpected, uncalled for, or it can be berating, an extreme form of devaluation. You would not know what happened, but it is their time to stroke their ego. And the best way to do that is to experience a high so that they do not have to feel the low of their true self, of their true identity. When they are left on their own, 
the tendency is to get in touch with that, that shame, with that insecurity of theirs, with that rotten, fallen, fragmented self. They don't want to go there. It's suffocating for them. It smells. It's pungent. So they would run away and they can find anything, any reason to do that. They cannot sit in their own shade. They run away from their shadow and their shadow is really dark and dense. And their life is all about pretending to be somebody or something that they are not, which is where that extreme self-hatred comes from. Even though they may seem like to be most self-loving, it is the opposite of it. It's rooted in self-hatred, which is what they take out on you. All in all, a narcissist does not cope well when left alone on their own. They cannot stand their presence. It eats them alive. That was it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I will talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.